So you have to check your intentions, you've got to set your limits, and then the M, the, M, the last letter here is M, is you have to guard your modesty. You must guard your modesty. When I have given talks on modesty before, more often than not, people think it's about hijab. They think it's about clothes. Modesty has very negligible amount to do with clothes. Okay, there is a portion of that, for sure. But it's not just about clothes. This, in my opinion, brothers and sisters, is the forgotten sunnah. Especially in today's world, in today's Facebook-friendly world. We put all of our business out there. All of it. It's on photos, it's in pictures, it's on statuses. I mean, some of the statuses that I read, I'm like, I really didn't want to know that. You know, I mean, that kind of stuff. So it's really, we have got to get back to guarding our modesty. And modesty, brothers and sisters, is from the inside out. It's from the inside out. It's about how we talk, how we carry ourselves, how we walk, what we exude from, from within us. This is what the Prophet والسلام, was known for. And what do I mean by that? Bedouin Arabs could come up to him and ask him a question and he wouldn't reject them. Some of them would come and speak to him in a particular way and he would respond to them in that way just to make them feel comfortable. He was a master. He was a master of knowing his audience. What we talked about earlier, Musa alayhi salam making dua for his, for Fir'aun and his people. Now we've got the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam understanding his people, understanding the audience. And we have got to go back, brothers and sisters, to really exuding that kind of welcoming feeling. Other people should feel comfortable, not threatened by us. And even the Prophet والسلام, knew his limits. Musa والسلام, in that dua that I mentioned, he knew his limits. Wahlul uqlada min lisani. Untie this knot from my tongue. He recognized, look, I have an impediment. And he's asking Allah to help him with that. Recognize his own weakness. You and I have got to be real people. We've got weaknesses. We do. And for every individual, it's different. But we have got to be man enough or woman enough to own up to those weaknesses. And to say, Allah has got to help me here because I can't do it by myself. Musa couldn't do it by himself and I can't do it by myself. So we have to recognize, brothers and sisters, that, mo that modesty is about recognizing and how to honor the people in front of you. Right? So the people that you're speaking with, whether it's a brother or a sister, how do I honor them? What is the best way to honor them? And by the way, it's not always with swag. I mean, you know, boys got swag. But real men like the Prophet ﷺ have class. They have class. Right? People know where that reference is from? No. All right. Alhamdulillah. Um, and we have to recognize something, brothers and sisters, and that's when we're in the business of honoring others, we may have certain boundaries, but it may not be the same as somebody else's boundaries. Right? So I may say, hey, it's okay for me to do X, Y, and Z because my intention is pure. You don't know the other person's intentions, and you don't know how shaitan could be playing with you or playing with them. So it's best, brothers and sisters, to honor other people's requests. You know, at one time in this country, non-Muslims, it, it was actually dishonorable for a man to put his hand out to shake a woman's hand. Do you know that? How many people knew that? Raise your hand. You see that? It was dishonorable. They were seen as being some type of charlatan, some type of, you know, no, this is just too far. No, you don't do that. You don't stick your hand out in front of, you always wait for the woman to extend her hand before taking it. That was in this culture, pre-Islam, if you will, right? So we've got to recognize that there are limits now. Some of them are cultural that are, with on, that are placed upon us. And we all have our boundaries, but people may have different boundaries. And this is where you've got to recognize you have to do what is best in terms of your relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's, inshallah, where I'm going to end this talk, and we're going to open it up uh, for some Q&A.